Right, so it is day 77 of my New Year's tree planting resolution thing. I've already done the review, which will be going up tomorrow or day after. Um, but it is time for today's planting, so let's get on with it. Right, so I think anyone who's been watching this for any real amount of time will know that I'm not a big fan of bare soil. Um, bare soil is, is a problem for all manner of reasons, uh, not least because it tends to very, compact very, very easily when it rains, and everything that is nutritious in it washes away, and it's where an awful lot of the invasive weeds tend to settle in. So, let's put bare soil better in my general book. Um, and we have a little patch under the bamboo here, close to where I should be dealing with the, the remains left behind by a century tree that flowered and suckered a little while ago, um, where there is very little growing apart from uh, maybe a blackjack and a few little clumping grasses. Um, and so I'm going to be putting a lychee tree in there because it's quite a nice shady spot, so with a little bit of water and a little bit of care the soil should perk back up quite nicely, it should come to life quite well, provided it isn't allowed to get so compacted again. Uh, so I'm digging a slightly deeper hole than I need and then leaving a little bit of soil in there, popping the lychee in. I'm going to be putting it in with a little tiny aloe grande dentata uh, sucker because the one that I put in the soil with the um, Bauhenia petersiana doesn't seem to be bothered by the mole rats, so hopefully it isn't one that they find particularly palatable. Um, I'm also going to be putting in three little pieces of Calanco blosfeldiana because the coffee pots I uh, propagated them in are disintegrating. So that is the flaming katia, which is a very ornamental little red flowering calanco. I'm also going to be putting in a piece of aloe cameroni, which will be acting as its shelter plant and its marker, because this is a spot which is already shady enough. I don't really want to be adding another tracina to that for this little tree. This has been more or less sun hardened, so it doesn't need extra shelter in the sort of very few minutes of the day where it will actually get direct sunlight. Um, it does need some water because I hadn't realized that where I had it sun hardening, it wasn't actually getting any rain with the direction that's been coming from for the last few times that it's rained at all. Um, so I'll be watering that in quite well. Finally, I'm going to be surrounding it with some short bamboo stakes, not to mark it out particularly, just because part of the reason this area is bare is because the chickens particularly like to kick and scrabble around here because the bamboo leaves that have fallen here are a great place for a lot of crickets and so forth, which the chickens like to eat. Um, and so just to remind them not to kick up my little aloes and my lychee, I'm going to be putting a few pieces of bamboo around it. Right, so that should be everything for today. Thank you very much for watching. Tune in again tomorrow when I will be planting something else that fruits. Right, so I don't know how clear it is, but I think you should be able to make out that in this giant mound of straw, which is probably about a metre and a half across, that is probably 10 or, 10 or 12 meters up in a tree, there is a hole. Now that is the nest of basically a miniature stalk called a hammercop. I will put a little uh, clip, if I can find one, of that up here as well. But that is one of our weird and wonderful little bits of native wildlife. Um, and they build these fantastic nests up in trees and they don't always use them. So sometimes they'll build six or seven in a year, often in the same area. So they've actually built two just in this one tree, and there's another one they built a couple of years before that in a neighbouring tree. Uh, these are Brachystegia spiciformis, by the way. Um, and it is just, it's just marvellous. And so if they then move out of that, or if they don't use it, it'll very often end, be, end up being used by other animals, like uh, rock monitors or barn owls. We don't have rock monitors here yet, but we do have barn owls and occasionally the Nile monitor. Um, but that is then going to be used by something else to nest in, and as it slowly collapses, as the hollow fills in, uh, the top will be used often by other birds, so sometimes the egrets or small herons will use it. Uh, some other true storks will actually sometimes use the hammercop nests as a base for their nests. All sorts of things will then use it, and it creates a whole extra ecosystem up in the tree. And I just think it's fantastic. <laughs>